Today's Novage webinar, BricsCAD Pro Industrial Strength DWG Design. BricsCAD delivers high performance DWG platform for field level CAD users seeking 2D and 3D functionality. BricsCAD brings productivity, BIM functionality, and mechanic design all in one interface. And all this at the fraction of the cost of other CAD products. So something to keep in mind. Today's webinar presenter, Dean Miao, is a solution consultant with Brixis and has over 30 years in the CAD architecture and retail industry. Um, and now I want to show you a little bit uh, of our um, catalog page where you can find Brixis CAD and all the Brixis product. Um, heads up, there's a special 10% discount on most BricsCAD products uh, up until the end of the month. So if you like today's presentation and you are sold, we would love to sell BricsCAD to you. Just give us a call or uh, visit novedge.com. And now let me um, turn the screen uh, over to Dean and um, take it yeah. away, Dean. Okay, can you hear me, everybody? Perfectly. Okay, and uh, you see my screen, yes? Yes, we yes. do. Okay, awesome. So let me get started here. Uh, so let me just introduce our team here. So I, again, uh, Barbara has already mentioned it, but I'm Dean Miao. Uh, online with me, I also have uh, Scott Pember, who will do a little bit of an introduction into who we are and our product offerings. Uh, so again, you just saw that, and just to dispel any uh, concerns, that's me. <laughs> So uh, let's get started. So Scott, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce Brixis to uh, our audience. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Barbara. You guys have uh, been tremendous hosts so far. Um, but I'm just gonna go real quick through just a little background of who Brixis is. We've, uh, we've been down quite a road over the past 20 years, but Brixis is, is a part of a hexagon, a very large company. Uh, and uh, we're, we provide computer-aided design software BIM tools, mechanical tools, uh, and collaboration uh, services out there for very large projects. Uh, we've been doing it for quite some time, and a lot of people here in North America really haven't heard about us too, too much. But we've had a strong, strong presence in Europe and in Asia, and we're really just starting to launch it out here in, in, in North America. So we're very customer focused, and we have a tremendous amount of flexibility in the things that we do. Next slide, please. So who we are, we are a part of Hexagon. We're approximately a $5.2 billion company. Uh, we have over 300,000, actually it's probably close to 350 to 400,000. And across uh, 110 countries, multiple languages localized there. Uh, we're headquartered in Belgium. and uh, We have uh, well over 300 plus employees uh, throughout, throughout the world. Next slide, please. Uh, Hexagon AB is the parent company and one thing I wanted to emphasize right here is that we do have about 21,000 employees uh, and we do have 5,000 in R&D. But when you take a look at the revenues towards R&D, one thing that we do exceptionally well is that we pour a lot of that back into R&D. So we're up closer to 10 to 12 percent of our revenues get poured right back into R&D. That's what makes us so successful in so many ways, whether it's hardware or software offerings out to the world. Um, next slide, please. Hexagon uh, really is in a lot of different parts of the world. Uh, anything from autonomous vehicles to mining, uh, safety and infrastructure. Our PPM group really handles, uh, which is a former Intergraph. Uh, they go hot and heavy into uh, large plants, oil and gas. We have a tremendous presence in the geospatial area and ag uh, agriculture, believe it or not. Um, so we are all across the board, and they're all doing very, very well, uh, all these different business units. Next slide, please. Uh, some of the things I wanted to emphasize before we 
uh, turn the ball back over to Dean. Next slide, please. Is our product family, and it's it's kind of an interesting thing to kind of go through. You've got 2D, which is our light product. You've got 2D and 3D, which is our pro product. 85% of our our software that's being sold is really contained in those two. Then you can add on uh, a, a BIM module. We call our baby BIM. It's not true. Uh, all the way uh, type of uh, tools for if you're doing uh, high-end operations and projects. Then we have a mechanical product. But what makes it so unique is that the next uh, area is it, it encompasses the whole product into one interface we call Ultimate. And we've had huge success with this solution because uh, the, the end users just have so much more flexibility. On top of these, uh, you can get into our 24-7 uh, a cloud collaboration tools where there's document management, project management, and it's a common data uh, exchange area. So it's a Dropbox on steroids, supports you know 70 different file formats. Uh, it's got workflow tools, uh, permission tools, and all, you know it, the most important part of it, it is an unlimited user type of scenario. So you can have as many users as you want. Um, next slide area. Oh, next slide, please. Now, one of the things, uh, and I think this is the last one that you have of me, so uh, you'll be able to, move, we'll be able to move on to Dean next and jump into the product. But one thing that you want to pay attention to is the number one reason why people really jump to to Brixis is our flexible licensing, by far, bar none, because the product works and behaves just like all the other CAD products. So there's very little learning. Uh, to go along with it, but the flexible licensing that comes with Brixis, whether it's a multi-user network, a subscription, or a perpetual license that you buy once and, and uh, you pay for annual maintenance uh, thereafter, uh, we've got a lot of different options for a lot of different users. So pay attention to that and all at a fraction of the cost of, of some of the other CAD products. Dean, I know I blasted through that very quickly. <laughs> I think no that, uh, I wanted to jump in to get to your part of yep. this presentation. So I'm going to yep. turn the ball back over to you, my friend. You got it. Uh, so before I get into the actual live product demonstration, let me go through a couple slides here. So for today's agenda, I'm going to cover uh, the BricsCAD launcher, which is um, the interface to launch the various product editions. And I'll go through that in just a minute. Uh, I'll go through some of the intelligent tools that BricsCAD offers in terms of ways that we can optimize your workflow. Uh, we also have a very intuitive and familiar interface that I'll go over with. So those of you coming from legacy CAD interfaces will be very familiar with uh, the Bricks CAD user interface as well. And then we'll cover some unique and innovative tools that the Bricks CAD has developed that will, again, as it says here, supercharge your productivity. So we'll get into that. And then finally, I'll just do some simple 3D modeling and showing how you can intuitively design in 3D and again, because we are a single platform, you can go from 2D to 3D to BIM to mechanical, all in one single platform. So with that said, just a little bit about what BricsCAD is. So BricsCAD is a compelling, compelling CAD alternative without compromise. So no compromise means the same DWG format, a familiar interface, list compatible, and we can migrate any of your customizations. No compromise also means we have flexible licensing, as Scott just mentioned, so we can go, you can go network, perpetual, subscription, and the price is typically half of a, a typical CAD solution. And what really sets our Bricks CAD solution apart from others is our AI-driven productivity tools and smart optimization tools, again, which I will show you in the presentation. So what is the Bricks CAD difference? So our BricsCAD difference is really our AI machine learning technology, which is a cornerstone of our product. So we help improve productivity by predicting commands that you most likely are used, would like most likely use and use next right at your cursor. Uh, we also increase productivity with many of the repetitive tasks that use, such as move, copy, rotate, and scale. Another very important aspect of productivity is having a clean optimized drawing so you can be nimble as you work. So again, we understand that whatever industry you're in, most drawings that you receive have been touched by multiple users or parties before they reach you. So that means that oftentimes those drawings become bloated or altered. 
But with BricsCAD, we have smart optimization tools that can quickly optimize your drawing so that you can perform at you know, lightning speed. So with that said, let me get right into a demonstration of BricsCAD. So as I mentioned earlier, the first thing I wanted to talk about was what is called a BricsCAD launcher. So the BricsCAD launcher is the first screen that you would see upon deployment of BricsCAD from the, the user icon, which is right back here. So I'm running BricsCAD Pro and it tells me that on the screen. And because I'm running BricsCAD Pro, I have a, a variety of workspaces that are available to me. So I have 2D, 3D, and Civil. So again, depending upon what edition or license level that you purchase, if you buy mechanical, obviously this will be turned on. If you have BIM, this will be turned on. If you have Ultimate, all of these workspaces are available to you. <clears throat> Additionally, if you download the trial, you'll be downloading the Ultimate version. So when you download the trial, you'll have access to all of these workspace modules uh, when you start using BricsCAD in the trial mode. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started and open up BricsCAD. So, you know, BricsCAD is more than just familiar. It's also unique and innovative, and it is sometimes different. So before I start jumping into that, just kind of preface this a little bit in terms of, uh, you know, one of the key aspects of CAD is its ability to draw something once, copy it, move it, and use it again. So in this piping layout here, it's just been created with simple lines and blocks. BricsCAD has extended some of those tools, some of the tools such as copy and move with commands, which are called copy guided and move guided. So copy guided, the copy guided command automatically aligns entities to relevant geometry as they're copied. So with copy guided, there's no need to zoom in, there's no need to stamp the objects. You don't need to even need to trim uh, the lines after the, co the copy is, is done. Copy guided does it all for you. So the way that this works is I'm gonna go ahead and deploy the copy guided command here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and window around the area that I wanna copy. And once I selected the objects that I wanna copy, you see these little blue arrows around the objects. And those are what are called guide curves. So as I hover over this, these other pipes here, you can see it snaps to it because it's, it's, it's the similar geometry. So I can, as I hover over any one of these piping locations, it will snap to it. So once I decide where I want to put this, I just snap to it and it's done. So you can see quickly, I just hovered over, or grabbed this, this valve, used copy guided, and it placed this valve where I wanted it to, and it cleaned up all the geometry behind it. The, um, in conjunction with copy guided, we have what is called move guided. And as the, move, as the name implies, it moves geometry as event rather than copy it. So again, same kind of idea. I'm gonna window around that valve over here on the vertical pipe. And now again, as I hover over different pipes here. Again, it will align it up with those guide curves. And as I place this, this pipe or this valve here, you'll notice that it automatically cleans up that pipe for me. So again, very innovative, very productive in terms of not having to go back and clean up and heal this, this, this vertical pipe for me automatically. So um, copy guided and move guided work, works on all different types of geometry. So in another example here, I have a, uh, a simple drawing with a bike path. The, pike, the, the path is drawn with lines and P lines, and the bike is a symbol or a block. So again, I can deploy my copy guided tool. And again, I window around the objects that I want to copy. And it knows that this is the, the guide curves, knows that I want to follow that roadway here. And again, I can just snap and place these objects precisely where I want to based on what I've copied here. So again, very easy and very productive in terms of my ability to copy something very quickly without having to do a lot of cleanup. So let me go back to this other drawing here. Now, one thing I did want to mention is that, it, that you might have noticed that while I was executing the copy guided and the move guided commands, I didn't have to search for them. I didn't type anything in. I use what was called the quad menu. So if I right click over an area inside of my drawing, I'm presented with my quad menu. So the quad menu has a variety of commands that I can select from these drop downs here. And depending upon what objects I hover over, the, the, the quad will, de will detect what it is that, and predict what it, what it is that I may need to use next. So the benefit of the quad is it keeps your focus on what you're creating on the screen. So you don't have to look for menus, toolbars, or anything like that. It just it predicts what it is that you want to do. And again, if I hover over another object here, it understands that this is a block. So it gives me a different uh, set of commands that are available for like 
for instance, editing this block here. So again, very intuitive, very smart. It's, it's the AI learning uh, tools with inside of, of BricsCAD. And because I have the ability to use that quad menu, and again, it was deployed from my, my standard uh, status bar down here by turning that on, I can go into what's called a clean screen. So clean skin, as you can see, once I go into clean skin, it removes all those other command lines, but it gives me a bigger canvas to work on. And because I have the quad, I can still continue to work. So again, I can right click in an area here and I can start drawing. I can hover over this and I can offset this. I can grab these objects and I can very, very quickly add a, a hatch pattern to it. So essentially in three clicks, I was able to draw something very, very quickly with inside a brick set, just using that quad. So another tool that it works in conjunction with the quad is a tool called the rollover tips. So again, I can turn that on by my status bar at the very bottom here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my rollover tips. And as the name implies, as I roll over entities or objects in my drawing, it gives me the the properties about that entities. So in this instance, I roll over a polyline. It's told me it's on its color is red, its base layer is layer on base, and a variety of other properties about that object. And the nice thing about having the rollovers tip is that I can edit things in here. So if I wanted to change the color of this and put it on the appropriate layer, and it should be by layer, I can go ahead and change it right here. Again, I can grab a bunch of other entities here. Again, roll over these objects. Again, it's telling me it's on color by layer. It's on the wrong layer. These should be on layer base. So again, I can click on my roller tip and change that object to have to be on the correct layer. Again, all heads up. I'm not searching for commands. I'm, I'm my eyes are looking at what I'm doing on my screen. So very productive and very easy for me to use. So let me talk about a couple other productivity tools that can uh, that can boost your productivity. So one of the things that I want to talk about here is a tool, again, I can turn on from my status bar again at the very bottom. It's called my dynamic UCS. So typically, when I draw an object, or in this case, a rectangle, as I'm drawing it, it it's drawing this rectangle based on my UCS here. But what if I wanted to draw an object that's aligned with other geometry in my drawing? Well, with the dynamic UCS turned on, as I as I deploy this command for rectangle and I hover over this object, you can see that I have this X, Y, Z that's it's, it's aligning myself to this object here. So now I can start drawing on that, align my, aligning myself with that object here. Again, I can deploy my rectangle command. I hover over this command here. I can actually lock myself to this coordinate, this coordinate system of this uh, particular object here and then start drawing very easily here. So again, very productive. I'm not having to take my UCS and rotate it. I can draw against any object inside of my object very quickly. Another um, productivity tool is the nearest distance feature, which shows the distance between any two, any two entities. So if I select this uh, rectangle here and this rectangle here, you can see it's giving me the nearest distance. So if I needed to change the distance between these two objects, I can just open up this dynamic field and say this needs to be 200 and it automatically moves that object for me. I can also select sub entities of this rectangle or this polyline and said, use my, my um, nearest distance command and say, well, that needed to be actually 200. Oops, 200. And I can automatically change the distance between objects inside of a polyline as well. Uh, one other thing with the nearest distance is that, again, if I select these two objects and I had this here when I first clicked on it, is that you can change the, the, the distance between those objects using your UCS. So I can move these objects in the X or Y di uh, direction very easily by just using the nearest distance command. So let me move over to a different drawing here. So if I were to hold my my cursor button a little longer on this object here, I'm presented with what is called the manipulator. Oops. So the manipulator is a versatile tool, a grip tool that can swiftly move, rotate, scale, copy, and mirror entities because it's attached to this, this object here. So with this icon here, I can select this bar and I can move this in the X direction. I can move it in the Y direction. 
I can actually rotate this thing as well. So I can rotate it freely. So if I'm if my cursor's outside that circle, I can just freely rotate this at any degree. Or if I move my cursor inside that circle, it moves it at 45 degree increments. Also with the manipulator, I can copy objects. So I can grab this vertical bar here and I can copy this object and I can copy it about the center point of this gondola set. I can also grab a, a series of elements here. So I got these three elements here. And again, using my quad, I'll go ahead and deploy my manipulator tool and I can copy and mirror these objects as well. So let me just try to snap to that endpoint. So very easy for me to copy and move, manipulate, all heads up. Again, so um, the with the intelligent tools that they showed you with the quad, the rollover tip, the manipulator, copy guided. So BricsCAD is offering some unique intuitive tools and features to again, supercharge your productivity by adding automation to a lot of your workflows. So let me step back just a second here and let me go to my quad and turn off my clean screen and go to an interface that you may be more familiar with. So I've just turned on all the, th the uh, standard command windows here. So again, uh, talking about an intuitive and familiar interface, uh, BricsCAD has all the standard uh, ribbon tools here. So again, you can select your uh, your commands from the, the, the ribbon tool here. We also have some drop downs here from each one of these uh, various tool sets here. So under draw, you can select the, the various tools here. Under modify, there's a variety of modification tools under there. Along the top, we have our toolbar. So the toolbars can be turned on or off. So I just happen to have a couple of them on and those are indicated by the little blue checks next to those two items. So again, you can turn on any one of these toolbars as you desire. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, we have the standard drop down. So if you want, prefer to draw from drop downs, they're here as well. A little unique to BricsCAD is the panels. We have uh, some interactive panels here. So in, in this case here, I have what's called the uh, properties panel up. So as I select items here, it's, it's interactive and it's live. So as I select this block reference here, again, it gives me information. It's a little more comprehensive than say my rollover tip where my rollover tip is can be kind of a subset of those things that I can edit. But with the property panels, it's giving me a full breadth of things that I can do about that particular item in there. Additionally, we have our standard layers here. So you can turn your layers on and off uh, just like you can in traditional CAD. There's all the controls here. Uh, we also have uh, tool palettes, uh, which, uh, you can, oops, which, which you can customize, you can add. There are some standard ones here. So uh, for instance, uh, the BricsCAD one has some standard BricsCAD commands here. Uh, I happen to have some here that I've created on my own. So from the panel, I can actually easily drag and drop these these blocks into my drawing very easily here. So the, the tool palette, the tool palettes is a, a very useful tool for bringing in a lot of your block information. Uh, and you can turn again, just like the tool palettes, I can turn on various panels. Again, they're indicated with the blue checks there. Those are the ones that I actually have active in my session right now. Again, you can just select them and they uh, become active in the, in the panel here on the right hand side or on the left hand side here. Excuse me. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, from the BricsCAD launcher, there are various workspaces available to you. And again, I'm using BricsCAD Pro. So in Pro, I do have my 2D drafting tools here, but I can very easily change my workspace to modeling. So if I select my, uh, my modeling workspace, you can see just in a few seconds here, it updates my interface. And now I'm, get, I'm presented with a whole new set of drawing tools that are, what are meant for 3D drawing now. So I can very easily switch from 2D, add my 3D. If I have BIM, I can change my work, uh, my workspaces to BIM, Mechano, whatever they may be. And again, I wanna emphasize that it is a single platform. I'm not getting out of BrickCAD and coming back in. All I'm doing is I'm changing my workspace. So I'm gonna go back to my, mo or my, um, my drafting tool uh, workspace because I really just need to see my drafting tools for now. Uh, Again, some of the familiar uh, interface features here. We have the standard command line. So again, I can type in commands here like line, 
you just start drawing lines. Uh, again, I can just start typing things like copy. You'll notice that as I start typing in the, into the command line that it's giving me prompts for what potential commands that I'd like to use. And that's, just, that's controlled by what's called my autocomplete. So again, I can grab these out of objects here and I can copy them uh, very easily. Uh, but going back to how I'm accomplishing the autocomplete, if I right click in my, um, in my command window, you can see that I have my autocomplete checked on with all these various things here. So that as I start typing, it predicts what it is that I want to, to uh, use in terms of commands inside of BricsCAD. Let me get rid of this. Um, and as I was pointing to earlier, we do have our the standard status bar at the bottom where you can manipulate and control various uh, workspace uh, items. Uh, in BricsCAD, we have what are called entity snaps, which is the way that we snap to objects here. So uh, you can change uh, the various settings, for instance, for the entity snaps here. Uh, these are the default snaps that I have set up, but you can also change and add various ones to uh, the settings here. Uh, per your as you desire. So a uh, status bar is very familiar and um, uh, in terms of how you can change some of those settings. Uh, something that's unique to BricsCAD is the interface setting. So interface setting is a one-stop shopping where I can change kind of the look and feel of my interface. I happen to be on modern, but I can change it to classic, or if I just want to use toolbars, I can switch it to there. I can go from a dark interface to a light interface. I can dock my panels, float them, or I can tab them. I also have control over a variety of things, like if I don't want to see my status bar, I can turn those on and off from here. I can also customize my workspace. So if I just click on the customization here, I can go into my CUI uh, dialog box, which should pop up, there it is. And so in my customization dialog box, I can come in here as, as the name implies, I can customize my ribbon, my keyboard, my tablet, my quad. Maybe I wanna, perhaps I have some different aliases that I'd like to use. I can add those here. I can also, uh, load a partial CUI. Again, as I mentioned, if you have customizations that you want to bring over from your legacy CAD system, you can go ahead and load those here, or you can create a new uh, CUI, CUI file here as well. Um, again, uh, very common or familiar is our standard uh, model space tabs and our layout or paper space tabs here. So again, I just have a standard layout here for this drawing. So if I want to uh, print, again, very familiar, I just hit my print command over that layout tab. And then I have my uh, page set up here where I can select what plotters, whether it's the PDF or if I have a or if I have a physical plotter, I can send that to a physical plotter, set, set up all my settings here, and then apply them. And I can also preview this um, plot prior to either sending them off to a printer or um, actually printing it off to a PDF. So very easy for me to do plotting inside of BricsCAD as well. Um, Another unique feature to BricsCAD is what is called the Layout Manager. So again, sort of similar to the interface settings, the Layout Manager is sort of this one-stop shopping where I can add new layouts, I can copy layouts, I can delete them, I can organize them how I want to, I can actually publish or plot right from the Layout Manager right here. So again, very easy for me to plot my drawings or, or manage my uh, layouts from the Layout Manager. Uh, in terms of annotation, again, I keep using the word familiar, but it is familiar. So I'm in a drawing here. If I want to annotate it, we have the standard annotation tools. I can come here and lay down a dimension, just a simple dimension, and to the endpoint, to the endpoint, things like that. So I can lay down a dimension very quickly. Uh, I can also add a multi-leader here. So I can select this shelving here, turn off my ortho for a moment, and just type in a quick word here, S-H-E-L-F, so call that a shelf. So again, annotating drawings, fairly straightforward, very familiar. So again, I can just add my dimensions, my text, uh, whatever they may be to my uh, particular drawing. Um, let's see here. So, uh, you know, so 
one of the questions you may have is, you know, what is the path from your legacy CAD system? Uh, so the path, again, is very intuitive and easy to learn and adopt. And that starts with the drawing. So BricsCAD's native file format is DWG. So that means you can simply open any DWG file in BricsCAD and, con and continue to work with them. And there's no translating or no, no migrating of that data. So again, I can go to my, my open tab here. And I can, again, I can just select a variety of drawings and just go ahead and open them right in BricsCAD and start running with them right away. So very easy for me to transition from my legacy CAD files that I have. If you happen to be using list programs, my file is a little sluggish here. Hang on, let me get to the right drawing. There, okay. Uh, if you are uh, have, um, if your workflow includes Lisp routines, uh, Lisp routines develop in other CAD applications, usually run without modification in BricsCAD. So let me just open up my folder for where this file is and grab my count Lisp program. I can just drag and drop that right into my file. And once it's loaded here, I can just go ahead and run that. So when I run it, this one just happens to do a count of all the fixture blocks I have in my drawing. So uh, very easy for me to use list programs inside of BricsCAD. Blade, which stands for, let me type that in. I'm a little sluggish here, it's a little slow. Might be a bandwidth issue, but Blade is BricsCAD's Lisp advanced development environment. So the, this environment is a smart editor panel that uh, to develop and edit your Lisp routines. So you can de debug the files, you can debug functions, uh, you can actually go ahead and load those Lisp programs into your host application. So we can do that right inside of BricsCAD. So any uh, Lisp editing you can do right here in our Blade editor. So very easy for you to do uh, Lisp programming editing as well. So let me uh, step back just a little bit further and go back to the start menu. So uh, when you first open up BricsCAD, you will be presented with this start menu. Um, and in the start menu, it's going to give you all your recent files that you've recently opened. And as I hover over them, you can see on the very top there, it's telling me the path by which those where those files live. I can also start a new drawing. So you can use a new drawing by either using a predefined template that we that we provided for you. Or if you have a custom uh, DWT file that you have of your own, you can actually load those and use those as the backdrop for creating your new drawings. And again, as I just showed you a minute ago, you can open up an existing drawing from just the open drawing there. On the Learn tab here, uh, we provide you a variety of sample files that you can uh, review. Uh, we have a BriskCAD 101, we have a a file for essential commands that you can review. There's also ones that cover the various workspaces that we provide. Uh, we also have a variety of tutorials that you can access on our learning page, and this is just on our website. So on the BricsCAD Learning, there are a variety of free, uh, free uh, tutorials that you can take. Uh, so you just need essentially a login to uh, have a BricsCAD login account. And these, you can access these and uh, uh, quite, quite a few uh, essential ones like the BricsCAD Essentials and the uh, AutoCAD to BricsCAD are very popular. So again, those are available to you uh, if you're coming into BricsCAD and wanted to learn our, our product. On the Applications tab, uh, the application tab provides access to a lot of our third-party applications that run on top of BricsCAD. So there are hundreds of third-party applications. So in this interface here, you can search, learn about, and even try many of them. So if you wanted to learn about some or explore some of the plant design uh, third-party apps, you can just click on the Explore button there. And that brings you right into the page where all of the uh, uh, plant design third-party applications live here. So again, you can review them, you can uh, read more about them, or even download them and try them on your own. Okay, so let me move on to a couple of our unique and innovative tools. So um, from a CAD drawing efficiency standpoint, uh, I think you guys are coming from CAD, know the block entities are, as a be best practice, uh, a way of keeping drawing size down, uh, file size manageable, and a file size down. So you now BricsCAD also um, recognizes and uses the standard con concept of creating blocks. So again, if you wanted to do a standard 
create block, we have the standard block definition here. Give it a name, select the uh, base point, select the entities and such. So we do recognize a standard um, uh, block definition creation. However, in this situation here, I have a drawing with one block here that was created. And all of these other instances of this block were accidentally exploded. So now they've been uh, reduced down to polylines and simple geometry. So again, the traditional method would perhaps be to create that block, delete these instances of all this geometry, and then manually place that block and trying to match where those locations are. Well, uh, that could be extremely tedious. So BricsCAD has created what is called Blockify. So Blockify streamlines the creation of a new block definition by searching and replacing all matching geometry with a new reference. So when Blockify is complete, it replaces that matching geometry with a new block reference definition. So before I get into actually showing you how to use Blockify, I wanted to show you another tool we have here, which is the search tool. So if I didn't know where Blockify lived or was in a ribbon, I can just type in Blockify here. And you can see that it shows me where Blockify lives. It has fine-tuned my menu system here, and it says, well, Blockify on Uncert lives here. On the Home tab, it lives here. And if I go to my Manage tab, it lives here. So the search tool is a nice way of helping you find tools that you may not be familiar with, and it will find them for you. So let me digress again. So let me go ahead and run Blockify. So I'm gonna use Blockify to match an existing block here. So at the very bottom, I'm gonna match existing block and I'm gonna search the entire drawing and automatically with just basically two clicks, it said, okay, it found this block and it found this matching geometry. And do I wanna convert those into blocks? Well, it's telling me with the green check, so those are the ones that I can change. If I, I can uncheck them and say, well, I really don't wanna change that one for whatever reason. So you do have the option of selecting which items or entities that you want to change into blocks. And then I go ahead and say, replace them. So that quickly, now these change into blocks that fast. So let me show you another example of how Blockify works is that again, I have another situation here where I got these entities, which are again in primary, they're just lines, circles, arcs. And again, the traditional method may be to create this block, delete these instances and replace them. Well, Blockify makes that a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna run Blockify. I'm gonna select this geometry and say, well, that's the geometry I want to replace as a block. I'm gonna use all the defaults here. I'm gonna search the entire drawing. I'm gonna give this file a name, call it rail. And automatically it has found that matching geometry says, well, do you wanna change these all the blocks? And say, yes. So automatically that quickly it has changed these uh, references or uh, this geometry all into block references. And because it's now a block, I can go and insert that block and I, I called it rail. So I can go ahead and say, okay, insert it. So very quickly, I was able to in essentially two clicks, modify this drawing and change all the, all the simple geometry into block references. Um, one other thing that I want to point out is that we have a tips panel here, which is an interactive in product uh, helping help tool. So, for instance, if I were to, again, go back to my block command, the tips panel updates because I've selected block and it gives me a quick tutorial and an animation about how to use that command here. If, if, this, if this simple uh, description of how to use Blockify isn't, it doesn't suffice, you can always go to the help page here or I can go to my dropdown and go help here. And because I was on Blockify, once I select my help, uh, help from the, my drop down command. It's a little slow here. It will take me to the BricsCAD help and it will take me directly to the Blockify command, which gives me a more comprehensive description and uh, 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 kind of walkthrough of how to use and uh, uh, the Blockify command. So, again, it, because it is an in product and interactive uh, tool. As I select various commands inside of BricsCAD, you can see that the tips panel will update. So not all commands are here, but the vast majority of the commands inside of BricsCAD are now, um, you can get the, use the tips panel to get kind of a very quick animation of how to use a particular command inside of BricsCAD. 
Okay, uh, let me finish up with the last little piece here, and then I'll get into 3D, which is drawing health. So uh, drawing health is, a, is another innovative tool that BricsCAD has developed. So again, as I mentioned earlier in the introduction, is that you know no matter what CAD program you're using, uh, drawings can become problematic, they can be sluggish, they can be full of du duplicate geometry blocks and other entities. So that is why uh, we have essentially created the drawing health. So drawing health is a combination of a couple things here. So we have this, the familiar purge, audit, and simplify tools, uh, which they can run independently and they accomplish the task of cleaning up the drawings very well, but it can be time consuming and tedious because we're running them individually. But with drawing health, it combines the functions of multiple standalone of those multiple standalone functions into one interface. Um, so um, when I deploy the drawing health here, I'm presented with a variety of uh, cleanup routines that are preloaded with BricsCAD. So I can use any one of these preloaded uh, routines and I can edit them. Come on. And I can use them and create them and save create my own. So you can pick through what it is that you want to use for your drawing uh, cleanup. Uh, you can also add different tasks here as well. And so once you're satisfied, again, you can save them off or you can say, okay. And there are a couple ways of running the, the health check. And if I hit this little uh, question mark up here, it gives me a little tutorial about how to use drawing health. So that's uh, handy to have. So it talks about how you can use it and the different routines that I just talked about. But there are three different modes that you can run drawing health with. Uh, one is the express mode, which as it says here, it's just, it's just the fast way of running the, um, the health routine and automates everything. <laughs> and then the second method is the interactive mode where it, the, as the name implies, it's interactive. It gives you a little bit more control over what things that, it, that you may want or may or may not want to um, uh, modify or alter. And then the final one is the simulation mode, which I'll show you here, which is a, a, a great way of running um, the health routine before you actually run it because it runs a simulation so that you can preview what it's going to do before you actually run it. So in simulation mode, I can go ahead and start it. And it tells me these, it's found, you know, 130 unused objects, uh, you know, five duplicate box, I'm gonna say finished. And so once it's finished, if I go back to my folder here and I find my drawing health text file, this is a summary of what would happen if I were to run the, the health check routine. So you can see there's a variety of things that it's cleaning up here. It found the five duplicate blocks, uh, a variety of layers that were not being used, and a lot of, of uh, you know, 40 blocks that weren't being used here as well. So it's a, um, uh, you know, if, if you ha have some apprehensions about running it the first time, you can always just run it in simulation mode and say, well, let me see what's going to happen before I run my uh, drawing health. So again, a very uh, innovative and um, helpful tool to clean up your drawings. To, you know, obviously, the, you, you want the drawing to be as light as possible when you're work, working inside of uh, any CAD program. So I'm going to segue right into the last module, which is drawing in, uh, uh, creating some 3D geometry or drawing in 3D. So I'm going to go to my mug drawing here. And as I showed earlier, all I need to do is go ahead and change to my modeling workspace and I'll, I'll have the tools and commands that I need for doing uh, 3D geometry here. So as you see here, I have uh, my UCS has now the Z vector here so I can draw in 3D. Um, and again, I have my still have my 2D drafting tools, but I also have my modeling surface and mesh tools here so I can start drawing in 3D. Uh, what's handy when working in 3D is my look from tool. So this might be more relevant if I draw something very quick here. Uh, let me just uh, draw this box very quickly. So the look from tools is, is kind of a handy way of kind of changing your perspective very quickly. So I can look from my top front left, I can look from my top right front, I can look from the underside, I can look at the front of my drawing, or I can look from the top of my drawing. So it's just a handy way of uh, manipulating your view inside of your drawing, or you can just you know, freeform manipulate your drawing uh, inside of BricsCAD very easily. So let me just show you a couple simple uh, drafting tools we have here for creating some 3D geometry. So you saw I just, created a simple cube here. So I can use some of my, uh, using the quad again, I can just, I can stretch this 
I can stretch this out by just selecting the face of that uh, of this cube here, and you can see that it created two segments. So again, I can use that command again, but I'm going to go through my hotkey assistant and snap through and select the last option here, which what it did, it, it combined this now. So rather than having two separate blocks here, I have one contiguous one as I stretched it. I can also combine um, 2D functions in here. So I can go ahead and use my circle command here and I can let me turn off my snaps and just draw on this face. So I can just draw a circle here. And again, I'm going to use my push by uh, create a, a, um, a solid here again, but I'm going to use my hotkey assistant and then create that as a hole. So very easily creating a hole through that object. And then I can also simply go back to my modeling tools and create a chamfer. So I'm going to select these edges of this block here and I can just start chamfering this out. I can chamfer this all the way to that circle. You can see that it, it modified that edge very nicely for me. And then finally, uh, let me just draw again some simple geometry in 2D. So I got a circle here and let me draw a, a polygon. And let's see here, I'm gonna draw this as an eight-sided. Uh, something like that. And then I'm going to use my manipulator to move this up, something like that. And then I'm gonna loft between these. So let me use my lofting tool. So I'm gonna just loft between this and this. And so I lofted the object. And then finally, what I may wanna do is let me just do something silly and twist this. So I'm gonna select this object to twist. And I'm going to twist this about um, the center point of the circle. And do something like this and maybe 500 degrees. So you can see very easily, again, I'm just showing you some free form modeling here, but you can see that uh, we have all these standard modeling tools that allow you to start being creative and create some uh, fun geometry. But what I wanted to do is I have some pre-drawn geometry to help me draw um, a um, saucer and cup. So let me just use this geometry to help me draw a saucer and cup. So let me turn on my entity snaps. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna create my saucer. So I'm gonna revolve this. And I'm gonna use that as my axis point. And I'm gonna revolve this 360 degrees. So very quickly, I was able to create my little saucer here. So the next thing I wanna do is create the cup. So I'm gonna use the cylinder command. And again, I wanna to snap to the center of this object here. And let me create this here and give it a height. And so now you can see I've already very quickly, I've created the saucer and I got a cup, but I need to put a hole in this. So let me put a hole in it by using, again, some simple drafting tools here. Again, I wanna to snap to the center point of this top here. Come on. And let me just draw this. So now I have my uh, circle that represents sort of the, the, the thickness of that cup, but I need to uh, protrude that. So let's grab this and let's push this down. So again, very fast, I was able to create my cup and then perhaps I want to put a nice lip on this. So I'm gonna go to modeling and create a fillet. So I'm gonna grab these edges and create an edge here. I'm gonna get rid of this circle because I don't need it anymore. So now you can see I have a, a smooth out the edge of that uh, lip of that uh, cup very quickly. And then finally, I wanna put the handle on it. So I'm gonna to go to my front view and I'm gonna do a sweep. So I use my sweep command. That's my profile. And this is the sweep path. And there it is very quickly. I use my manipulator and I'm gonna move this into place. And I'll delete this geometry here. Oop, get rid of that. 
and now you can see very quickly I've created a, a mug and just a few clicks here. And then finally, if I wanted to render this, I'm gonna grab all these objects. I have some predefined uh, materials that I created. So I'm gonna create, use the mug material. And then I'm also gonna turn on my table and I'm gonna select my table. And I'm gonna give that a proper uh, a material as well. Call it table. And then let me uh, get a view here, something, that, something like that. And I can render this. <clears throat> And I can just render it in winter, or I can save it off to a file, but it's relatively fast. So you can see by because I've added those materials that will have some reflection to them. Oh, let me open that up again. Hey, Dean, I just wanted to uh, give you a heads up. There's 10 minutes left. All right, I'm almost done. I just wanted to show one last thing here. Uh, and what I wanted to show is that once I have these things modeled, I can bring them into a product called Twin Motion. So I have a file that I brought this uh, cup into. Uh, it's a little bit more comprehensive than just the cup, but this is all drawn in Bricks CAD, and I just brought the cup into this environment just to show you that you can easily do some quick animations. It's a little chunky here because of the bandwidth I have, but again, you can just bring that right into Bricks CAD and or into Twin Motion to do some quick animations and renderings in right out of Bricks CAD. So with that said, as Scott had mentioned, uh, let me finish up here and kind of wrap things up. Let me go back to my PowerPoint. And let me finish this up here, Scott. No problem. So uh, yeah, uh, just to quickly summarize what BricsCAD has to offer for you. So number one, BricsCAD has everything you have today in your current CAD solution. Uh, number two, CAD, uh, BricsCAD has more flexible licensing, licensing options that will save you two to four times on average. And BricsCAD has unique AI machine learning automation tools that will boost your productivity. And finally, BricsCAD is built on a single DWG platform where you can start with 2D drafting, go to, uh, go to 3D, BIM, or mechanical, all with, them, all with an amazing interoperability. So BricsCAD is a CAD platform without compromise. With that said, Scott, I'll let you go over and talk about ownership of BricsCAD. Oh, well, thank you. Um, can I get you to, to tap that button just a couple times? One thing that, uh, uh, thank you, Dean. I, I, we really appreciate that work um, and learning all about BricsCAD right there. One thing uh, that I wanted to kind of conclude this with is uh, cost of operations, cost of operations of BricsCAD. We understand during these these times uh, where people are looking to save some money, this uh, this might be a very attractive solution for you, and you have the flexibility of choosing whether you want to go with a subscription on an annual basis, or if you want to go with a perpetual license where you're buying it once and you pay for the maintenance. But when you compare it to the typical CAD packages out there, you can see where the cost of operation becomes very economical for you. Uh, the blue being the uh, our, our perpetual license where they buy once. Uh, you buy it once that first year, then you're paying a nominal fee thereafter. Uh, and then when you compare that to the overall cost of of uh, operating that CAD software over three years, you're seeing a significant cost savings. And it, they are significant. Um, so one thing to take a look at, you're looking at a better product with some better tools, and it's at half the cost. So uh, please take a look at this. And with that, Dean, I think uh, we could go to the, the next slide if there was one, if I recall. Yeah, uh, really, we are done. If we there we are can talk about this. We get that into, into Barbara's hands uh, as we go through that. We can open it up for questions now. Thank you, guys. That was uh, really cool. Loved, loved this cup and the saucer. That, that was really quick <laughs> and uh, effective. Um, we're uh, sticking around for questions, so this is your chance to type them in. In the meantime, I want to take the screen back and yes. show you again where you can find BricsCAD at Novage.com. And I want to remind you that Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, fast service, and best advice. And you can call us anytime. Really, our phone number is on every page of our huge catalog. So 
don't be afraid to talk to us. We're always here um, to help. Um, so I don't see questions. I think uh, I, I, for one, I'm speechless <laughs> and uh, very excited about having you on board. And I'm looking forward to more webinars because this does not end here. I know Brickscut, this is just the tip of the iceberg, right, guys? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we're so, going to we're going to touch on the real big differentiators moving forward. Um, and I think you'll see a lot more out of it because it's a very powerful product. Exactly. So stay tuned for future announcement. And since there's no question, I'm going to thank you both uh, for today's presentation and um, ask everybody to visit Novedge and uh, wish you a great rest of the day. Thank bye you. bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. -bye.